Boca Tov. Good morning. Here we are on Wednesday. This is August the 31st, 2016. We will begin a new month uh, tomorrow. I'm ex- so excited. I, I want to tell you, uh, didn't have much rest last night. I, I did my Bible study at B'nai Israel here in Shreveport uh, last night and, and didn't get home till about 1030. And time I got down to the barn, fed my horses and I uh, had to get a truck ready for a man who's going to pick it up out of Georgia this morning, a truck that my son had rolled. So I got up at, uh, went to bed about 1, got up at 5. Uh, so didn't have much sleep, but I will tell you, I am pumped. I'm excited. I am hearing so many reports by people that are telling me that for the first time, the scriptures are making sense to them. <laughs> and that just, that is so exciting when I, when I see that the scales are beginning to fall off people's eyes and they're beginning to see for the first time the truth of, of what the Scripture is telling us and what Yahweh would have us to do and, uh, and what Yeshua, His Son, gave us an example as to how we are to walk. I'm hearing of pastors that are saying that they're not going to observe Easter anymore, not going to have Easter egg hunts anymore. Many are inquiring about the feast days of our Father uh, from Leviticus chapter 23, His, his appointed times. Uh, we're coming up on those uh, very shortly now as we'll have the Feast of, of Trumpets, uh, the Feast of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, and they are coming up here as the Fall Feast. And it's so exciting as I see that people are beginning to wake up and say, well, wait a minute, I've never heard of the Feast. What, what is this? What is the Torah? And as they're beginning to come out of the deception that we've been under for the last 1,800 years, and they're telling me that the Scriptures are becoming a new book to me, and they're getting excited about studying the Word again. And I I just can't tell you how exciting that is uh, to me. Uh, We find people that say that they've gone from denomination to denomination over the years, trying to to find one where they felt like they were really getting truth. And and, and where there's a lot of great denominations and churches out there, they said, and great people, great fellowships. But they said, I just kept feeling that something wasn't right in what they were teaching and, and what the Scripture was saying. Because anybody that, that study, has studied the Scripture very much will see that most denominations, if not all of them, uh, we've by our teaching and what we're saying, we've made God and His Son Yeshua to be paranoid schizophrenics, bipolar individuals that can't make up their mind about what the plan is and what they want to do. And so it is so exciting as I hear from people that, that are excited now about the Word. That's all I want to do is just is to get you excited in the Word. Uh, I'm hearing people that are going to our website, leaving comments, uh, so I want to encourage you. If you, want to, if you want to leave a comment, go to ShreveportMessianics.com. Go to the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. If you just, just tell me how encouraged you are by, by what we're doing. We're not getting you to go there so we can capture your email and, and start soliciting money from you or that sort of thing. I think if you've been listening to me, you know that ain't what we're about. I'm not seeking your money. I'm not wanting you to leave your church. I want you to stay in your church. But what, uh, what my goal is to not put down any denomination, but I want to expose the lies of Satan, the adversary, who has deceived all of Christianity for the last 1,800 years. And... So when I say deceived all of Christianity, I included myself in that. We were all deceived and believed the lie of Satan that he led our leaders and others to to hand down to us that we didn't have to keep our Father's Sabbath, that it had been changed to the Baal uh, day of Sunday, that we didn't have to keep the dietary laws, that we didn't have to keep our Father's calendar, but that we could uh, celebrate Easter and Christmas and Halloween and and all these other pagan uh, uh, holidays. And so I'm not asking you to leave your church. You stay in your church. Keep your sign up out front, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopal. I don't care what you call it. What I am trying to get people to do is to return to the faith that was delivered to the saints. And that is and to walk as Yeshua walked. And I'm telling you, he walked absolutely in obedience to his father's instructions and I, I love exposing the lie of Satan. I understand that I will very likely come under attack by him because he does not like me doing what I'm doing. Uh, and so I would encourage those of you that can pray to pray for me. Uh, you said, what do you mean, preacher? What do you mean those that can pray? 
I'm saying if, you, if you're not seeking to keep our Father's instructions, he won't hear your prayer. What he said plainly. Uh, Proverbs 28, 9, He that turneth his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Yeshua told us, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then you may ask what you will, and it be done of my Father in heaven. So there's ob- obedience is our uh, guarantee of answered prayer. You say, well, I believe in him, but you're not being obedient to him. You can forget him. He ain't going to hear your prayer. The only thing he'll hear is your prayer of repentance. And this is what I am trying to get Christianity to do. Preachers of all denominations, everybody to come up and say, God, we were lied to. We didn't know. We repent. We want you to just show us what you want us to do. And I am hoping to see revival in this country before our country is absolutely destroyed. And, and I'm excited to see that there are signs that that is beginning to happen. Uh, so let me continue on now. I don't have much time. I, 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 so much I want to say, but this 30 minutes goes by so fast, and I'm already six, seven minutes into it now. Uh, so yesterday, I want, to, I want to make a transition now. We've talked about Nicodemus and, and why Nicodemus was so surprised that the gospel was going to go to the Gentiles, that they could be born from above. And, and Yeshua explained to him that he did not come to establish the kingdom. And, and this is going to be a, once I do this, I think you're going to see the method to my madness and what I'm doing. I, we're, today we're going to start looking at Peter's vision in Acts chapter 10. Now this is, this is one of the great deceptions that Satan has put over on us by making us think that the dietary laws were, have been done away with, that we could eat anything we want to eat. God's made all, all meat, all foods clean now. And what I'm going to show you, if you will stay with me, is that Acts chapter 10 and Peter's vision teaches no such doctrine, none whatsoever. And, and I think if you'll stay with me, you will be able to see that out of the Word, so that you're not taking Steve Rainey's word for it. I want you to see in your Bible and allow the Holy Spirit to open your eyes and say, oh my God, we have been deceived. How could we have bought into this false doctrine? Because it's robbed us of our power, and, and that's what Satan wants to do. Understand, he cannot rob you of your salvation. If you're justified by, by grace through faith in Messiah, Satan cannot take that away from you. But what he can do is rob us of our power. That's the doctrine of Balaam. If he can get us to go against the instructions of our Father, we, we, are, we lose our power and our, our ability to do what the Father put us here to do. And this is what I'm trying to do is expose this. We turn back to the Father, have revival, and put the devil on the run. And, and I am, I'm excited to do it. In Acts chapter 10, you, if you've studied your scripture, you'll know that in, in Acts 9, uh, Peter has uh, raised Tabitha, uh, by interpretation her name was Dorcas. Uh, she had died, and Peter came. They sent to him and, and said she had died. Peter went in, knelt down and prayed, and Tabitha uh, uh, opened her eyes. Peter presented her to the people alive, and and there's uh, uh, revival there in Joppa. Peter excited about what the Lord is doing, and many believed on the Lord, verse 42 of chapter 9 says. And then verse 43 says, And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon, a tanner. So in chapter 10, verse 1 says, There was a certain man in Caesarea, uh, called Cornelius, a centurion of the band of the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside, and he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel was spake to Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all the things to them, he sent them to Joppa. And on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while he made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened 
And a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet, knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common, or that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, call not thou common. This was done thrice, three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house, and stood before the gate, and called, and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. Now while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you that uh, with the short time that I've got in 30 minutes here, I'm, I'm not going to get through all of Acts 10 today, because this is, this is so incredibly important that you understand this. This is going to change your life, friends, I'm telling you. Once you see that, that this passage cannot be used to say that God did away with the dietary laws. And it's going to tie into to Nicodemus and everything else that I've been leading up to here when you see it. And it's going to be so clear to you if you will, if you will seek God uh, and ask him to open this passage to you. I don't want you to just believe me. I want you to use your common sense and read the Scripture and let the Spirit lead you. First of all, let's set just a little bit, a bit of background here. Peter is there on Simon's rooftop. He's been there several days. Now, they tell us, and I'm not sure that historians, uh, but, but the, the common uh, uh, dating for this passage of Scripture is about 41 A.D., now, you know that Messiah, Yeshua, was crucified about 31 A.D. So this is about 10 years after Christ's resurrection, after he has ascended to heaven. Peter and the other disciples there on the Mount of Olives saw him ascend into heaven. Yeshua gave them the final instructions after his resurrection. The Great Commission, Go ye therefore into all the world, make disciples, teaching them to observe all of my commandments, everything that I have commanded you. Now, we've covered this before. He didn't tell them to go make believers. He said, go and make disciples, teaching them to observe, that is, do all that I have commanded, all the commandments, which he got from his Father. So this is some 10 years now, and I, I want you to think about this. Um, you're going to have to get involved here a little bit and, and, and get the cobwebs out of your mind. Try to forget all the denominational crap that you had put into your head and, and open yourself up and say, okay, I want to look at this in context. This is 10 years after the Messiah's resurrection. And when, when this sheet, and I believe, by the way, that it was the tallit, it was the prayer shawl, that was lowered by the four corners. This was the prayer shawl that Yeshua would have worn. It's the one that I wear on Shabbat. Uh, it, it's the one that, that all uh, of the, the Jews uh, who were obedient to the Father wore. Uh, and so this, this is the tallit, I believe it is. It was lowered from heaven. And it has all kinds of four-footed beasts and creeping things and, and lizards and snakes and and, 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 and fowls of the air, uh, which would include buzzards and, and, and hawks and crows and, and, uh, uh, and possibly eagles. And this voice says to Peter, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. And Peter says, not so, Lord. I have never, I want you to understand that word, I have never eaten anything common or unclean. Now you're going to, before I can go on in Acts 10, and we'll, we, we, I may take the rest of the week to finish this, but, but I, want you to, I want you to meditate. Think about this now. 
Ten years after Christ's resurrection and ascension back into heaven, Peter is still following the dietary laws. I want you to let that sink in for a minute. This is, this is so important because what it tells us is that Peter never had any idea in the three or three and a half years of, of Christ's ministry that Peter spent with him, uh, walking with him, and, and, and sitting and eating with him around the fires, around the Sea of Galilee, and in Jerusalem, all the time, the feeding of the 5,000, the feeding of the 4,000, Peter has never gotten any idea, none whatsoever, that the Messiah, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, as you call him, ever taught against the dietary laws. And Peter is the one you remember that Christ gave the keys to the kingdom. Catholic Church won't say he's the first pope, uh, but uh, I won't. That's another. That's another message. I won't go into that now. But uh, but Peter has is still keeping the dietary laws. So let me ask you something. Do you believe that if Peter had understood Yeshua to teach that he had come to abolish the law and the Torahs and that everything was going to be different now, we're under grace, you're not under the, you're not under the instructions of the Father anymore, he has instituted grace, that's all about love and you don't have to keep those old commandments. If that was the case, I want you to recognize the fact that Peter has no idea about that. None. Not so, Lord. I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And the voice says to him, What I have cleansed, call thou not common. Now, I know I'm going to take a little bit of time in this, but this is, this is so important. Uh, I want you to notice that the voice speaking to Peter did not say, Peter, I have cleansed all these animals. You can eat any of these things you want to now. That's not what he said. Now, we in Christianity have interpreted that way because of what I've taught earlier on in our teaching, what we call confirmation bias. It's because you were taught from the time you started vacation Bible school and you first entered into some Christian denomination that Christ had come and had abolished the laws and changed the dietary laws and that we didn't have to do any of that anymore. And so consequently, when you, and by the way, that was put into your head before you read it in Scripture. There may be some of you out there that, that uh, had never been introduced to Christian denomination of one kind or another and just reading the Bible yourself, but I've never met one of them. We, we had this stuff programmed into our head. Uh, it's like programming a computer hard drive garbage in, garbage out. And so because you were told from the time you were uh, ever started reading the Bible for yourself that Christ had come and abolished the laws and done away with the dietary laws, consequently when you come back and get around to reading Acts chapter 10, well, you see this and you well, yeah, yep, that's, that's it right there. That's right. He did it. He said, you kill all these animals. You need anything you want to. What I want you to understand, friends, Please listen to me. He was not given instructions that any of these animals had been made clean. What the voice said to him was, What I have cleansed, call thou not common. What I have cleansed. He did not say, I have cleansed these animals. Now, you say, well, why, why in the world would he be doing this? I'm going to tie this in to what I've been telling you about Nicodemus. Nicodemus didn't understand this. You have to understand that God is preparing Peter to take the gospel to the Gentiles. He gave him the keys of the kingdom, and he's to open it to the Gentiles. And God has got to break Peter out of some of the uh, stinking thinking that he has had from the traditions of men or from the rabbinic uh, teachers that he grew up under. Friends, that is not unlike what I'm trying to do uh, with myself as I go back to the Scripture I'm trying to get you to see. We have been taught things that are not scriptural. 
Peter had been taught a lot of things from the rabbis that was not of God, absolutely not of God. And so what God is doing here is he's trying to, he's trying to give Peter a visual illustration because breaking paradigms and, and, and traditions is a very difficult thing to do. And so this, does, this, this vision has nothing to do with food. What God is showing Peter, he lowers the sheep three times. Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. Not so, Lord. Nope, nope, not me. I have never eaten anything common or unclean. I'm going to say it again because I know that this is so hard for some of you. You've got to understand. Here's Peter. He does not have any, any thought that God has changed the dietary laws. Why? Because he understands that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. He's not bipolar. He's not a paranoid schizophrenic. He's not going to make the dietary laws and eating swine's flesh and this kind of stuff uh, punishable uh, in the Old Testament. But now in the New Testament, it's going to say, oh, okay, you need anything you want to. But then when he comes and sets up his kingdom, as we find in Isaiah 65 and 66, that God says he will destroy those that he finds eating swine's flesh. It's in your Bible, Isaiah 65 and 66. Go find it yourself. So we say, well, wait a minute. God, make up your mind. Is swine's flesh bad or is it good? It's bad in the Old Testament. It's good under Jesus. We're under grace. But then when Jesus comes, sets up his kingdom, it's going to be forbidden, forbidden again, and men are going to walk in Torah. So when you see this, you say, wait a minute. This is crazy. And that's why I have been trying to get you to look at the Scripture from a macro point of view and not a micro. When you go into micro and look at a passage of Scripture, you, you, you've heard the old saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. You can't see the big plan of God because you're hung up on a verse of Scripture here that you don't understand, that you're taking out of context, and it seems to be saying something to you that is totally contrary to the overall plan of what God has given us. So incredibly important that we see this. Now, some of you are maybe a little ahead of me right now. For some of you that are teachers and preachers, you're saying, well, you're thinking about Mark chapter 7 and Matthew chapter 15 where, where Yeshua's disciples uh, were criticized about eating with unwashed hands, and, and they, they challenged the Messiah about it. And they said, why do your disciples uh, transgress and violate the tradition of the elders and eat with unwashed hands? And uh, so I'm going to come back and deal with that later on. I promise you. Yeshua did not say that they could eat anything. He did not say that, that uh, uh, you could eat unclean food. Did not do it. And I'll come back and I'll show you that. But many of you, because again, of your confirmation bias, because you've accepted that it had been done away with, when you come back and read these passages, you say, yep, that is right there. That's what he did. I'm going to show you that that is a deception of Satan, the adversary, he has deceived us into going against our Father's instructions, and it is not what the plain, ordinary meaning of the text is all about. So that's what we're dealing here with Peter and his vision. And so Peter is puzzled. Now, he's not saying, it, notice it never occurs to him, well, you know, I wonder what that swine's flesh tastes like. Peter never thinks about food. He, know, he knows that this does not have anything to do with food. If you read the context, he's, he's, not, he's not questioning, well, I wonder if I need that stuff now. Peter knows that's not what God's dealing with, but he said, I don't understand the vision. I, don't have, I, I have no idea what God is trying to tell me. And what it is, is I say God is, pre is preparing Peter to realize that many of the things that he has been taught all of his life is tradition of men and not the instructions of our Father. Now, this is so foundational. You're going to see, because it, it's exactly what you and I have done, friends. And I don't care whether you're Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, non-denominational. I don't care. All of Christianity that is worshiping on Sunday and is eating swine's flesh and thinks the dietary laws have been done away with, we've all been deceived. And it is Satan's lies that I am trying to expose. And this is what God is doing here with Peter. Same thing. They were following the traditions of men and not the instructions of our Father. And God is giving Peter a tremendous lesson here about it. So Peter, uh, as, he's, as he's 
concerned about this stuff. What in the world did this vision mean? Verse 17, he doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean. Then these men came from Cornelius, and Peter was instructed to go with them, doubting nothing. Verse 21, then Peter went down uh, to the men, which were sent to him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that fears God, and of good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house, and to hear words of thee. Then called he in them and lodged them. That is, Peter called them in, and they, they spent the night there in, uh, in Simon's house. And uh, on the morrow, that's the next morning, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, now Caesarea is north of Joppa. It's uh, near, Joppa's near Tel Aviv, there in modern-day Israel. Caesarea is uh, on the coast, up north of there. And they go up, and as they enter into, uh, uh, enter into Caesarea, uh, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and his friends. Now, uh, uh, while Cornelius sent these men down to, to get Peter, he's called all of his relatives and all his friends and everybody in, because you know, God has told him to send for this guy, and he's going to tell him something very important. And so they're all there. And... Uh, Verse 25, as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Verse 28 now. Now, I, I want, you, you have got, Underline verse 28 in your Bible. This is, this, this is what this is all about right here. And he said unto them, Ye know, let me check the time here. Okay, i got a couple of minutes. He said unto them, Ye know how that it is un, uh, an, an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Now, we're going to come back to this tomorrow, and I'm going to, I, I, want, you, I, I want you to read, maybe read over five or six times. Read this vision of Peter from verse uh, 1 through here. I want you to continue to ponder and think about the fact that Peter, 10 years now after the resurrection, Peter is still keeping the dietary laws. He has no concept that God has ever changed them, that Yeshua ever changed any of it. And I've already gone over this with you with Paul and Peter and all of them, and Paul uh, offering blood sacrifices in Acts 21 and the Jerusalem Council. Uh, all of None of these apostles ever thought that any of the Torah had been done away with. None. And Peter is no exception right here on Simon's rooftop. And what we're going to see when we come back tomorrow, is what God was trying to show Peter, and you will understand why it was necessary for God to lower this sheet and repeat this to Peter because he's getting ready to show him something unbelievable. Shalom Aleichem. See you tomorrow.